Hey, uh, two full question, both kind of contrasting topics, but one, obviously after the Raiders game, you said it, you, it's good to have some motivation and going forward, that's what we'll lean on. Um, just how have you been mo more motivated after that game? And then also want to ask you about your, your tyrants, turkeys, and what you're doing today. And how cool is that for you to continue giving to the community even during these COVID times? Yeah, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, well, you know, obviously a few weeks ago about the Raiders, we hadn't lost a game in a while. You know, I think defensively, you know, we hadn't really played that bad in a while. So for us, it was a gut check. Uh, it was a reality check for us. And, uh, you know, like I said, after that game, I thought we needed it. You know, obviously we coming off the Super Bowl victory and starting the season the way we started it, um, you know, you can kind of get complacent. You can kind of think that things are always going to go your way. So uh, I was glad that we kind of, you know, had that moment. Um, so, cause we've really been getting better um, in my mind uh, since that day. So, uh, and then, you know, with the holiday season approaching, obviously, you know, it's been a rough time for, for everybody. Um, and for me and my foundation, we're just trying to do our best to, to lighten the load, to, to, to help at least one family smile, to, to make one kid, you know, just remember the good times, you know, from, from this year. So um, uh, I'm grateful to have a platform to, to be able to have a foundation to, to be able to impact and, and really try my best to help people. Let's go next to Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, hey. Talk to me a little bit about Derek Carr, what you saw in that game from him and what you can expect this time around. Well, I thought, you know, I thought he played a great game. Uh, I thought he got to the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, he was patient. Uh, he was calm, got his team in the right place. Um, uh, and he was able to really be effective. Um, and I think even, you know, watching, you know, film of him, you know, really the last couple of weeks, um, you know, that's what we going to have to really focus on is how can we disrupt him in the pocket? How can we get him to move his feet? You know, how can our big guys up front, you know, uh, really impact the game. And then on the back end, you know, how can we stop those big shots that, that they love to take, you know, um, and I think John Gruden and Derek Carter, they, they've really been working well together. Then you can kind of see that on tape. And um, so it's going to be very important for us to, to really, to really hone in on him from, from the very first play to, to mix up different disguises, to not give him uh, the easy way out, um, to really make him work, you know, from down to down. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Lebo. Hey, Tyron, this game obviously meant a lot to the Raiders. Uh, they took this victory lap around your parking lot. I want to ask you about that. Was that to resonate in the locker room with you guys? And you've been on a couple of different teams. How long does it take you to get acclimated into a rivalry like that um, to where things like that could happen and you, and you, and you, and they, and you care about it? Well, I think, you know, you know for, for me, I think all these games are important. You know, I think this is the NFL and, you know, you got to try – got to try your best to win, you know, each and every week. Um, I think division games are even more, you know, important. So I don't think it's, it's any speech that, that, that need to be made or, you know, even if the other team happens to give you some, you know, bulletin board material, it's like, okay, this is still a division game. It's still a big game, no matter, you know, what happened last time. So I think that's really our focus, you know, right now is how can we just play our best game? How can we be the best, you know, version of the Chiefs? Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Right, I remember back in January during the playoff run, how you mentioned that the bye week was really the pivotal moment and when you guys took another level on defense. Um, with much of the same guys back in year two, what gives you confidence that you guys can reach another level uh, coming off this bye week? Well, I think we got great coaches, you know, for one. Um, and then I think we got some players in our room that – that are just motivated to, to be the best, you know, that they can be. And I think that, you know, a lot of guys are always looking in the mirror, you know, being critical of themselves first, you know, and, um, but I like to see our coaches, you know, they, they're really the ones that that's studying uh, the analytics and all the different things, the little things that, that we kind of overlook um, to, to get better at. So I probably say that bye week is, is good from that standpoint, because you can, you get away from scouting other teams and now you're able to kind of self scout yourself. And I think that's really what's, you know, put some teams, you know, in the right position going forward. Got time for a couple more guys. We'll go Sam and then Adam. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Tyron, you mentioned that the Raiders like to take their shots. A couple of those shots got you guys last time. I'm wondering if you've pinpointed the the reason for that. And also, is this game just one of 16 for you guys? Or when a team does get you, do, 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 are you looking a little bit more forward to this game? Yeah, I don't think you ever want to lose two, two times, especially to the same team. 
especially to a division team, you know, especially to a team that, you know, I mean, these two franchises go go way back. Um, and I think the answer to the first part of your question, it, you know, it comes down to us on the back end too as well, you know, not giving him that easy look, not giving him the easy read. And I thought we did that maybe one or two, you know, a few more times than we would have liked, you know, last time. And I thought he, like I said, his presence in the pocket, you know, um, I think he's really comfortable. He's in control when he gets, you know, to the line of scrimmage. And so if we can mix up certain looks, if we could disguise certain looks and then get to our spots, I think I think we'll be in a better uh, position defensively. We'll go last to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tyron. Um, Henry Ruggs had a couple big plays against you guys the last time. Is it one thing to to see a guy on paper runs a four two and and also to maybe see him on video? You can see that he runs fast, but is is it another to to, to experience that and get and get a real feel for it when you're playing against him? Yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've had great work against you know a lot of speed guys. I think for us, it comes down to you know just understanding you know football and understanding you know where we're at on the field. You know, a lot of times. You know, it's, I mean, he, he's pretty fast. He runs by people, but a lot of those routes are scheme routes. And if we can kind of, you know, see that pre-snap, I think it'll put us in a better position, you know, to try our best to stay on top of him. Cause you know, uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, if, if he's even, you know, he's leaving. So um, the biggest part for us is obviously to, to get hands on him at the line of scrimmage, but, you know, see where he is in a formation, because I think that it does say a lot, you know, about what they want to do with him you know, uh, when he's in certain spots. Tyron, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.